the son of Superman and the son of Batman team up to form the Super Sons in the instant classic series from DC Rebirth. What's up guys, Roman from RNS Entertainment here, and welcome to another episode of Comic History, the weekly video series where I retell and explain all sorts of iconic storylines, origins, and events in the world of comics. In this week's episode, we're going to be covering Super Sons from the DC Rebirth imprint, an incredible series written by Peter Tomasi, who also wrote the vast majority of the equally great Superman Rebirth series, that sees Jonathan Kent, aka Superboy, reluctantly team up with Damian Wayne, the son of Batman and current Robin. Though John and Damian had met and been forced into training together by their fathers, this is the book that officially puts them together as a team and creates a form of eventual friendship between them, as they hated each other from first sight. Along with the Jonathan Kent Superboy being one of, if not the best new DC Comics character, and Tomasi being a great character writer, the complete contrast between Superboy and Robin in their characters, attitudes, upbringings, and ideals creates a perfect and really fun dynamic that makes this book unique. It's one of my personal favorite comics currently being released, and I'm excited to finally cover it on Comic History. So let's jump right in. Super Sun starts right in the middle of the action, with Superboy and Robin in a high-speed chase through the forest, arguing back and forth while lasers fire past them, with Superboy saying that Robin had lied to him, and Robin saying that he just left out certain information. Eventually, the Super Sons decide to stop running, whirling around to face their robotic pursuers while arguing about whose name should be first, with Robin saying his because he's older, and Superboy saying his because he's taller. Going back to two days earlier, we see the lead up to the formation of the Super Sons, beginning with John attending a seemingly normal day at school. On the bus, he stands up to two bullies picking on a boy named Alan, with the bus driver yelling back to them to break it up. After school, John and his friends get ready to have a snowball fight, but when the bullies from the bus jump in, it becomes a snowball war. Eventually, the two bullies put rocks in their snowballs, hitting Alan in the face and almost hitting John's friend and neighbor Kathy. Jonathan has a brief flash of anger, and his eyes glow for a second before he does the Superman thing to do and controls himself, backing his friends up and getting ready to charge the bullies. Suddenly, a giant snow boulder drops down onto the bullies from the roof, and John looks up to see the silhouette of the bus driver, who reveals to John that he is actually Damian Wayne, the son of Batman, who had used his skills to disguise himself as a bus driver and even a substitute teacher to observe how different John's normal American life is from his own. At this point in the comics, Jonathan and Damian have already met within the Superman Rebirth title, and though they have been forced by their parents to undergo training together, they aren't exactly friends, and actually kinda can't stand each other. Later that night at Wayne Manor, Damian trains with Batarangs as Bruce marches past in his bat suit, with Damian excitedly jumping up to go with him. Batman tells his son that Damian was behind on his homeschooling with Alfred, and had shirked his responsibilities, saying that he isn't going with Batman until he shows that he has the ability to keep his word, speeding away in the Batmobile as Damian stands dejected. Contrasting the militant, harsh parenting style of Batman, we see the Kent family playing cards and eating snack food together, with John telling Clark and Lois about the bullies he had stood up to at school. When John tells them he was tempted to use his powers but didn't, they smile and tell him that he did exactly what they would have expected him to, and that standing up to bullies encourages others to do the same. Lois wins yet another hand of poker, and Clark's earpiece starts going off on the desk, alerting him to an emergency with the Justice League. Suiting up as Superman, Clark grabs Lois by the waist and kisses her, hugs his son, and flies off to save the world, with Lois telling John that it's time for him to go to bed. John's sleep is interrupted by a voice from Damien, who makes fun of John for going to bed at 9, before the conversation devolves into both boys saying how they would beat up the other. Lois calls into John's bedroom and opens the door to see what the noise was, and Jonathan plays it off as his laptop speakers, with Damien having disappeared from sight. Robin hangs from a tree outside of John's window, telling him that his name is Superboy, and that means he should stop going to bed on time and come out with Robin on a superhero investigation. Leaping and swinging across the Metropolis rooftops, Superboy and Robin make their way to LexCorp, which Damien has found out has recently had multiple break-in and hacking attempts. Clinging to the side of the LexCorp skyscraper, the boys hear a voice from behind them telling them it's a school night and a lousy time for breaking and entering. Lex Luthor, who is currently acting as his own version of Superman with a robotic power suit, tells them to get off of his building. 
but Robin grabs Superboy's ankle and throws him off the side of the skyscraper, telling Lex that Superboy can't fly and forcing him to follow the distraction and save him. As Lex swoops in to catch Superboy before he hits the ground, Robin makes his way to the roof of the building and breaks in through the security doors, with Luthor finally catching Superboy and demanding to know who the boys are. Yelling that they're nobody, Superboy kicks Luthor off of him and sprints down an alleyway, but is quickly caught again by Lex, who tells him that they are obviously not nobody. Not with Superboy's speed and strength and Robin's agility and smarts. Superboy tries to make up an excuse, telling Lex that they're fans of his. And he replies, if that's true, then why is Robin trying to plant explosives in his lab? Carrying Superboy by the scruff of his neck, Lex confronts Robin, who says that Lex has five seconds to find the 11 bombs he had planted in his facility, sliding underneath the surprised Lex Luthor and grabbing Superboy, leaping from the side of the building and landing on a nearby roof. A few minutes later, Robin and Superboy sit in an alley with Robin having hacked LexCore's security footage while using Superboy and what turned out to be fake explosives as a distraction. Damien says that he's better than Batman, showing Superboy footage of a boy around their age walking through LexCore, approaching an android, and then knocking out the cameras around him. Damien says that it will take him a week to sift through enough of the footage to figure out what was going on, but Superboy lazily speeds through all of the footage at once with supervision, quickly picking out multiple cameras, all seeing the boy breaking in at the same time. John says that Damien should just ask his friends in the Teen Titans to help him, but Damien shoots a grappling cord to get his attention, saying that he had used Batman's facial recognition database to get a name for their adolescent criminal. The Super Sons take Robin's dirt bike to track the child supervillain down, and Robin informs Superboy that this boy's entire family had been infected with the Amazo virus, which was a synthetic version of the programming of the Amazo android, a robot capable of mimicking the superpowers of any hero it came across. The virus quickly proved deadly, but a vaccine had saved most of the afflicted, though 97% of them lost their superpowers as a result. Reggie, the boy who broke into LexCorp, and his family had been part of the 3% who kept their powers, becoming a superhero family who fought crime in their small town before suddenly disappearing a few weeks ago. Coming up on a warehouse, Robin begins to formulate a complicated plan of entry, complete with gadgets and climbing, but Superboy simply opens the front door, with Robin sullenly following him inside. John tells Damien they should call their dads and explain all of this, but Damien refuses to give this investigation to Batman or the Justice League, saying that Bruce had already been coming down on him hard about the Teen Titans, and that he needed something for himself. While Damien reads a newspaper strewn in the warehouse for clues on the Super Family, John points out that Damien didn't invite him to join the Teen Titans, with Damien replying that John is technically still 12 years old, which is only one year younger than Damien, and not a teenager. Suddenly, John notices the bodies of several people crushed and bloody under a radiator, and recoils in shock from never having seen anything this horrible before. Damien grabs John and tells him to keep calm and help him figure it out, but John yells that it's over and that people are dead. Shoving Robin aside with super strength, Superboy jumps out of the warehouse, with Robin yelling from the ground to wait. John lands in the forest while Damien continues his investigation in the warehouse, noting that there were five members of Reggie's family, but only four chairs and four corpses. Superboy then comes across a girl hiding in the woods, introducing himself and finding out that she too had run away from the warehouse. As John smiles at her and tells her he promises to help, the silhouette of Batman looms behind him on a tree branch. Back at the warehouse, Robin continues looking for clues as the shadow of Superman approaches. And that is where we're going to wrap up part one of Super Sons, a dynamic duo the likes of which comics hasn't seen in many years, and in my opinion, just as fun of a character contrast as Superman and Batman themselves, who I always prefer to see as friends and colleagues with differing beliefs on methods and principles. While John and Damien start off hating each other, they grow to be friends and partners as the new generation of the world's greatest superheroes in what is honestly one of the best new comic books to come out in decades. If you want to see more Super Sons on comic history, let me know in the comment section below, along with any other comics or characters you're interested in learning more about. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to RNS Entertainment for weekly videos and podcasts on comics, movies, and more. And if you want to support the channel and help me make more great content for you guys, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash RNS Entertainment, where you can get access to extra content and even commission any story you'd like to see on comic history. I want to give a big shout out to Drew Miles for being a $10 patron this month, and I will see you all next time.